In this video, we're going to go over how to identify connective tissue under a microscope. Connective tissue has a lot of different functions in the body. It could be used for binding, support, protection, insulation, storage, and transport. So it's not going to be used for just one function. And what makes connective tissue unique compared to other tissues is that it makes a non-living extracellular matrix, meaning all the cells are going to be found in this non-living substance. Extracellular means outside the cell. So outside all the connective tissue cells, you're going to find this matrix. And this matrix is made out of two parts, ground substance, which is more of a fluid, and fibers, which is going to be more of the solid of the extracellular matrix. Now there's many different types of connective tissue and they're going to be identified by their extracellular matrix. So each type of connective tissue will have a different type of extracellular matrix that they make. So the first slide we're going to look at is of areolar connective tissue. And we consider the areolar connective tissue the poster child of connective tissue because it has all the parts to their extracellular matrix that you would expect connective tissue to have. So zooming into the high power lens and getting it in focus, you could see this extracellular matrix very easily. So with the staining process for this slide, the thick pink fibers are going to be your collagen fibers, while the thin purple fibers are going to be your elastic fibers. And the only fiber you can't see here is the reticular fibers, which are even smaller than the elastic. Now there may look like there's empty space between these fibers, but there's actually a fluid here. So this fluid is what we refer to as the ground substance. And the last thing you should identify are the different types of cells inside the areolar connective tissue. So the nuclei of the cells were stained purple, and you could see the different cells throughout the connective tissue and how they're spaced apart so the cells are not touching in this extracellular matrix. The next slide we're going to look at is adipose tissue, which is connective tissue that is used to store fat. Now zooming in here, it's going to be hard to see the cells, and that's because the fat is stored inside a vacuole inside the cell, and during the staining process, that fat droplet is washed away. So you're really looking at the absence of a structure that used to be there. But this fat droplet is so big that it pushes all the components of the cell to the periphery of the cell. And it makes this really unique shape for these cells that we call a signet ring shape. And a signet ring is like a class ring, so you have this wide emblem on a narrow band. And it kind of looks like that in these cells. So the band of the ring is the plasma membrane of the cell, and the emblem is the nucleus that was pushed to the side of the cell. So this shape is really what makes adipose easy to identify. To see the next connective tissue, we are going to go back to the trachea slide where we saw the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. So if we zoom in more superficially than that, we will see this connective tissue which is known as hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is unique compared to other connective tissue because the extracellular matrix is made out of a dense mesh of collagen fibers, which creates this kind of glass looking appearance for the extracellular matrix. And you could feel your own hyaline cartilage by gently touching the front of your throat and moving your fingers up and down. Now this matrix is too dense for the cells to move around, so for them to be housed inside this matrix, they need to have space to live. And so throughout this hyaline cartilage, you're going to see these open spaces to house cells. And we have a name for this. This is called lacuna. And the root word of lacuna is lake in Latin, and it kind of looks like lakes from an aerial view. And in this slide, you can even see these cells inside these lacuna. So you can see the stained nucleus of these cells. And so we have a name for these cells. We call them chondrocytes. And if you remember, chondra means cartilage in Latin. So we're talking about cells that make cartilage, chondrocyte. So the next slide we're looking at is of compact bone. So we're going to look at bone connective tissue. Now there's a lot of different parts to compact bone that you will need to identify. So I'm going to have a lot of different illustrations on the slide to make it easier to point out these structures. So the first structure you should identify is an osteon, which is the base unit of compact bones. So compact bones are made up of repeating units of these osteons. So we're just going to look at one here. In the center of this osteon, you're going to see a structure called the central canal or the haversian canal. And these canals are very long channels to allow nerves and blood vessels to pass through the bone. All around these central canals, you're going to see these little dark circles everywhere. And these are actually lacuna with the cells of the bone housed inside of them. Now the extracellular matrix to bone is made out of calcium, so it's very dense, and these cells are not going to move around. So they're going to stay inside these lacuna. And we have a name for these cells that are housed in these lacuna. We call them osteocytes. And in Latin, osteo means bone and site means cell, so bone cells. Now when these osteons are growing, they're going to grow in rings that radiate outwards from the central canal. 
So we call each one of these rings lamella or lamella for plural. And the last structure you need to identify that is hard to see in this slide because the camera didn't do a very good job picking it up are these little tiny channels that are radiating outwards from the central canal connecting every single one of these osteocytes. So these channels are called canal liculi, which means little canal in Latin. And they're going to allow blood to pass from the central canal to each one of these osteocytes so the osteocytes can get the nourishment they need to stay alive. So the last slide we're going to look at is of a blood smear, and blood is a type of connective tissue. So the extracellular matrix to blood is mostly made out of ground substance. And if you remember, ground substance is a type of fluid. And specifically, the ground substance of blood is plasma. So we have all our cells floating around in plasma, which is the extracellular matrix. Besides the ground substance, there's three other parts to blood that you need to be able to identify. The first one is red blood cells. And red blood cells are easy to identify because at maturity, they get rid of their nucleus. So they don't have any DNA for stains to attach to. So they're never going to stain purple. Unlike the white blood cells or leukocytes that still have their nucleus. So their nucleus will stain a purplish color. And the last structure you will need to identify are platelets which are these little tiny specks that are floating around in the blood and platelets are important for clotting. Okay, so just to recap blood, the four parts of blood that you will need to know is the ground substance, which is plasma, the red blood cells, which do not have a nucleus, the white blood cells, which do have a nucleus, and then the platelets. So that's all the slides that are going to be covered in this video. So with connective tissue, remember the main difference between each type is what their extracellular matrix is made out of, which is going to result in different functions for those tissue.